I'm Ron Calhoun. I was a professional magician for most of my adult life. Hi, uh, my name is Jason Smith, and I am from Northern Kentucky. Hi, my name's Chris Garner. I am a magician. My name is Brad Brown, and I'm a magician. When you ask the question, what is magic? It, it's, uh, in our language, English, words have varied meanings. Uh, if someone has a really exciting experience, they'll say that was magical. Uh, if, if somebody eats a, a, a really good piece of uh, food and, uh, you know, th that was magic, the magic of salt, the magic of flavoring or whatever. So the concept is magic is something that uh, is extraordinary. But it generally also means in, in, in our language, uh, perhaps maybe something to do with the supernatural, something to do with uh, somebody having some kind of a special power or ability. That type of magic, special powers, does not exist. That it, it, there, there is no such thing as magic where people have special powers. Uh, if, if, if studying magic, you could learn how to con actually control things Believe me, the guys I hang out with, we'd be right up on top of it. We're the guys who would be uh, making sure we understood anything because it's something we're actually interested in. So magic, today, there are no special powers. There are no, you know, we don't actually control anything. Magic is almost a form of psychology in that we study human nature. We study how people react. And we study how people see and visualize and remember. And in a sense, we turn those against the person and fool them. And we call that entertainment. So magic today, uh, from a standpoint of entertainment, is just learning how people think and process things and how they remember things and how they conceive and what they know. And then inside the laws of physics, just tweak that a little bit to come up with something that's exciting, something that fools, something that delights, something that hopefully will touch a person in a positive way. Uh, I actually started out when I was 10 years old. I was down at Silver Dollar City and Gatlinburg which is now called Dollywood. And um, a magician pulled me up on stage and he started plucking all these coins out of my ear. And from then on, I was just uh, really, really hooked. I got started in magic uh, pretty late in life. I was 45. Most, most magicians will tell you that they got a magic kit when they were three years old or six years old, but not me. I got a late start in life, and I started because I went to the mission field quite often. And uh, my pastor kept wanting me to preach, and I didn't feel like I could preach, but I loved to tell stories. I've been doing magic really all my life. Like a lot of magicians, I got started as a child. I fell in love with magic, with magic kits and local magic shops, things like that. And unlike a lot of people, I just have never outgrown it really all my life. You know, whether I had another job or whether I've been doing magic full time, you know, magic has really always been a part of my life. It's something that I, you know, really enjoy doing, and I anticipate always having that as a part of my life. I got started in magic uh, at about the age of nine, when uh, I grew up in uh, Goshen, Ohio, Claremont County. Uh, Goshen school system, Goshen, the Goshen Elementary School, uh, did not have a library. And when I was about, uh, I guess about nine years old, fourth grade, they had a bookmobile. And they would bring the bookmobile, or they would bring the bookmobile around, and they gave me this little card. Now that's magic, that's magic. It, it, it was a, a bookmobile card. And I could give this to somebody, and they would give me a book, and it was my book for 30 days when I had to give it back. Well. We took turns, we'd get on the bookmobile because the bookmobile was small. You could only let four or five kids on at a time. And I found the magic book. I found the magic book. So I checked it out, took it home, and I, I read it 
there was one particular trick that I learned. Now, I was nine years old. And I would do this trick occasionally. Not like I went down the rest of my life doing this, but occasionally uh, I'd see a deck of cards and I'd show this trick to somebody. And uh, it was really neat to be able to do something that other people didn't know how to do, but they enjoyed watching you do. So I, I learned from that, uh, that book. Later in life, when I was about um, maybe 22, 23, and this is rather sad and pathetic that I had nothing better to do with my life, but when I was about probably 22, 23, and I went to the Norwood Library and found they had a magic book section, which just really kind of just was amazing to me that, you know, you could go to a public library and find these books. But there was one book in particular called The Magic Book, original title. The Magic Book was by a man by the name of Harry Lorraine. And a lot of magicians didn't like that Harry had actually published this book because it actually taught sleight of hand. This wasn't the uh, you know, self-working tricks. This was a place where you actually had to learn how to manipulate a deck of cards, uh, how you could make one card change into another card. It also uh, just a, a, a variety of tricks, some mind reading tricks, some tricks with rubber bands, dollar bills, paper clips. And I studied that book. And most in my, when I went full time years later, when I did close up, most of the skills I had, I had gotten from that book, The Magic Book by Harry Lorraine. So I found that magic book at the library. Then accidentally stumbled upon a magic store in Norwood, Ohio, uh, Haynes House of Cards. And I went and started hanging out with some magicians and learning some of the tricks. And the best tricks are taught from one magician to the next. Hello, I'm Joe Farag and I help at Haynes House of Cards in Norwood, Ohio. Um, I got involved in magic when I was about six. A friend uh, had bought me a ball and vase for my birthday, and then everything kind of happened after that. Um, actually, recently I had another memory pop up that when I lived in South Dakota when I was about three, my dad did a thing where he rolled up a newspaper, made some slits in it, and made a, a tree out of it which is kind of cool. Um, I think magic is uh, still popular because every once in a while someone does something that just makes you go, wow. And it's the wonder and everything that people really get excited about. Magic to me is not about the mystery or uh, the figuring out how the trick works. Magic to me is actually having fun with the audience, uh, letting them have a good time with you, and also making them forget everything else that might be going on right now in their life. In book one uh, of the Tarbell Course in Magic, Dr. Tarbell said that a magician's a profound deceiver, both in words and in actions. He says what he doesn't do, he doesn't do what he says. And what he actually does, he takes particular care not to say anything about. He also says that a magician takes you to a fairy land of wonder, a land of Arabian Nights, whatever that means. I like to say it this way, a magician shows you something that you didn't see while he hides from you what you did see so that you only see what he doesn't want you not to see. The definition of stage magic is the art of using natural causes whose operation is secret to produce surprising results. But what magic is really about is about giving people kind of a, a wow moment. You know, unlike, or at least more than any other art form, magic is about introducing wonder. You know, it's about surprising people. So I'll take ordinary objects, I'll take thread, rope, tissue paper, whatever, ordinary objects, but use them in very, very unusual ways, ways that can kind of open up people's eyes, just make them experience wonder, which is something I think is lacking, at least in adults in our culture. We, you know, we, everything is mundane, everything is ordinary, it's the day-to-day, -day, and magic just lets us escape that, lets us you know, see things we don't normally see, and it just, it just experience wonder. 
I first got started, like I said, when I was 10, I got my first trick. It probably cost me about $12. Well, not me, it actually cost my parents $12. And that was called Nickels to Dimes. And I actually still have that little trick today sitting on my shelf at home, uh, just to remind me um, on how much fun this stuff is for me. And um, I probably got my first paying gig. I was probably around 12 years old. Um, got it from my neighbor. Uh, $20 for a birthday party and back then uh, doing 35 to 40 minutes I thought I had to squeeze in 30 tricks the 40 tricks but now with all the playing around I do with everybody it probably uh, I can probably only do about 10 tricks in 35 minutes which is that's still kind of long really but uh, it's not about the tricks it's about having fun with your audience and um, just having a good time with everybody. But um, I still practice every day. There was um, a time before I was married, uh, with, uh, before my two boys, I was doing restaurants three nights a week. And that really built my chops up on uh, the tricks I like to do. And also um, the ones would keep people coming back to me um, to see another trick the next week. So I'd have to learn new tricks um, just for that a few families that would come in so I could um, show them something new. That's we've been in business since the 20s. John Snyder actually made an agreement with US playing cards. He had started gaffing cards in the 20s, but in 34, he made an agreement with US playing cards to gaff their aviator back decks and form the Fox Lake Card Company. That's in 45-ish. Ronald Haynes retired from the Army and started helping Mr. Snyder. That's uh, when Mr. Snyder passed away in 46. Ronald Haynes bought the company from John Snyder, uh, renamed it Haynes House of Cards in 47. That's in 74, Mr. Haynes passed away and left Betty Winzig in charge. Here in the last year and a half now, I've been helping Betty with the shop and along with her, her granddaughter, Alicia Bird, that's we're running Haynes House of Cards. Um, we make a lot of our own, uh, and we're the, the first commercially available Svengali uh, stripper decks, mental photography, uh, brainwave, invisible decks, and we make them here in the shop. I think magic's still popular because of the intrigue because it, uh, people try, like to try to figure out what it is you're doing. Uh, they like being fooled. Another thing that was said, and I don't know the magician who said it, but he, it's said that uh, people who enjoy magic have a willful suspension of disbelief because they want to believe in magic. Magic, um, I think, is still popular because um, you got all these young kids growing up and this technology is just so unreal um, with things that you can do. I mean, I can actually do magic on my phone now. Um, I have somebody pick a card just right off my phone and I can tell you what card you picked. Um, but magic is still popular. It, it's still on TV a lot. They show that all the time. Um, you have shows on Friday nights. You have... Uh, Penn and Teller has a show on Wednesday nights, and uh, there's another show, uh, all the Carbonara Effect is also on, and um, that really, when people see that, it helps me out, because they're, you know, of course they can't get Penn and Teller to come to their party, but they think, well, hey, I know a magician, let's look him up, uh, so they give me a call, so I really like it when uh, magic's on TV. You have to understand that magic itself, the, the performance, the, the um, entertainment, uh, people have done sleight of hand. They have done tricks for millennium. Uh, the oldest trick we believe in the world, the, one of the two oldest tricks we believe, is the cups and balls, which we were, believe were being done 4,000 years ago. And the magicians in Pharaoh's court may not have been doing it to entertain, but they did do it to, to have some kind of an effect on people because people believed at that time, of course, it was real. The other old trick is the, the linking rings, which is a very old trick. Magic, magic happens in a person's mind. 
and it it is taking the world around us and then just tweaking it so you say that doesn't make sense and that's what where you get the magic effect why is it why is magic popular today why is magic as popular as it is now um, before television you had vaudeville and you had uh, uh, Howard Thurston touring the world doing a stage magic show vaudeville came along and you had uh, magicians doing some vaudeville work television killed vaudeville and a lot of people thought it would kill magic but it it didn't uh, in fact it uh, it gave it just a wider audience i believe the magic is still strong it's still popular when it's performed well because people like to be delighted and if a magician's doing the trick to just um, fool people then that, that makes no sense you know but we're we all like that childlike moment when we are surprised and it's christmas morning again and that's the appeal of magic there's not much in this life that you can just sit there and have <sighs> moments and that's what magic should do and people will always want to have those gasp for air moments of delight and enjoyment and Christmas morning, even when you're 40, 50, 60 years old like myself, when you have that moment of surprise and delight. Part of the reason magic is still popular, I think, is because it's so malleable. It can become so many different things. You know, like as a magician, I know a lot of about you know, older magic, where it came from. And over the years, magic has changed a lot in the way it looks. It can change to fit whatever the culture is. And a lot of older magic is, frankly, science today. The things they were doing are things that today are done, you know, like communicating over long distances is not really magical anymore. That's technology. But once upon a time, that was magic. So magic can keep reinventing itself to be fresh and be relevant to the culture. And I think part of what makes magic, you know, why it's still popular today in particular, is you know, with all the technology, with everything we have around us, I think it tends to kind of dull our senses to, to wonder. Everything becomes normal, everything becomes ordinary, everything becomes average. And you know, I'm, I'm not a Luddite, I love technology, I love my phones, and my computers and all that kind of stuff. But it's very rare for someone to really be surprised by something, to really be excited by something. And that's what magic delivers. Magic can help people escape from the world of the ordinary into something they haven't seen before, something they've never experienced before. I think our culture is always looking for something fresh, something new, something exciting. And magic can deliver that in a way that really few other art forms can, at least on a regular basis. And I think that really is the key as to why magic is still popular today after hundreds and thousands of years of it being around.